personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game is missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so for my for my David Morrell Jr. fans out here, you guys should be excited because uh, he does have a date, and it's a big date, and it's a big time on that date. Uh, so say the date, April 22nd, David Morrell Jr. will make his return to the ring for his what is it now his ninth professional fight so he's, he's starting to get he's starting to get up there with the fight he's starting to get some fights in the pros now in his ninth professional fight david morell jr will, will be taking on none other than senna ekbeko um ekbeko good strong sturdy 168 pounder coming off of a, a very good upset win on showbox last year against uh isaiah steen who was a who was a regarded prospect um, highly regarded prospect and and you know he did his thing he, he he did his thing in that fight that was really like where things came together for him in his in his career but um this fight will not on, not only will this fight be on the javante da tank davis versus ryan garcia undercard it'll be the co-main event of the javante tank davis ryan garcia undercard so a really really uh good matchup you know um listen morel uh one thing we're looking for him is is continued growth you know he looks at times in the ring to be a generational type talent, you know, uh, being a southpaw at that size with that with that punch output, with that footwork, uh, the fluidity that he has between his hands and his feet, um, so early in his career, you know, it, it makes people very excited about what could be for David Morrell Jr. And he's got listen, Egbeko. This isn't a guy in Egbeko that hasn't been through the fire. This guy has been through the fire. He's been in some real, real, you know, fights in his career. I mean. Uh, back in 2021, he, he suffered a loss to uh, Vladimir Shishkin, who's a you know ranked, solid 68 pounder himself. And ever since that fight, he's ran off four straight wins, uh, three of them by knockout. And most notable being his last fight against you know Isaiah Steen, who you know is not a big name in boxing, but if you're really paying attention to prospects and who people are hyping up and stuff, stuff like that, like his name was starting to get a little buzz, and you know he had some hype, you know, as a as a fighter coming out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. You know, a lot, lot, lot of people, a lot of my Ohio people, I know for a fact, because I remember it, even like four or five fights ago for Isaiah Steen, they, they were making a lot of noise about Isaiah Steen. So when he fought Egbeko, I was kind of like looking at to see what he'd do, and he wound up losing to Egbeko. So Egbeko earned this opportunity. He earned the right to to get this fight with a guy like uh, Dave Morrell Jr. because he 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 beat someone to get there. You know, um, Morrell is gonna have a, a, a an advantage in hand speed. He's gonna have an advantage in, I think, you know, maybe not power, maybe not as far as pure one punch power, but as far as hand speed and footwork, he has the advantage there. I, I, I give the slight edge to Agbeko in the punch power department, but they both can punch. We know that Morel can punch because, you know, thank God he's good now and and he's li he can live he can live a, a life now. But look look, look at what happened to Ados Yerbasinuli. You know, that's what Morel can do to you, especially if if uh, the referee doesn't stop the fire early. And he's able to get off as many punches as he wants. You know what I'm saying? So it's a good fight. It's it's a good fight to have on the Tank Davis Ryan Garcia undercard. And this really, you know, at Beko, I, I wish him the best. He's a he's a legit fighter. He's a fighter that I know is gonna come prepared and come and come to win and, and give his best account of himself. And I, and I and I hope he goes in there and takes Morel to some deep dark places because we, we we need that in boxing. You know, I, I love underdogs. I love the B side. You know, because I'm always Team F A sides. You know, it's all about them B sides for me. But, um, you know, truthfully, when you boil it down, they picked Agbeko for a reason, and they being PBC, because they saw something that they feel would allow Morel to look good. This really is supposed to be a showcase for Morel. Morel will have a lot of eyeballs watching this fight. This will be one of the most watched and bought pay-per-views in a long time in boxing. So he has a chance to really break out in a way that maybe most fighters don't get afford the opportunity to so it's important for david morrell to go out there and just look nothing short a sensational against um you know uh Agbeko, you know and, and and then look if he does his job the fight that's being talked about that it seems like all the governing bodies are trying to force is dave benavidez and he's talking about it himself pretty much saying that like if he takes care of Agbeko, which he plans to do that that's the fight he's looking forward to giving the fans so this will be his ninth pro fight let's just say if if morrell beats Agbeko, which he's expected to. Benavides would be his 10th pro fight if he, if he were to fight him next. So could you imagine that? I mean, 
what a task that's going to be to take to fight David Benavidez your 10th pro fight um that would be a great fight obviously you know Morel is one of the only guys in this weight class that has the youth and the size and the hand speed to match or offset some of the things David Benavidez does so I feel like you know what Benavidez can do a lot of what he's used to but Benavidez would probably have to dig a lot deeper into to that skill set of his to beat a guy like David Morel because unlike Kayla Plant you know Morel can punch you and hurt you with both hands he's not going to be a guy that's dominant with just one hand that's Kayla Plant's problem Kayla Plant doesn't have a right hand so you know he gets a lot he gets predictable when you get to the middle rounds as to where David Morel David Morel hits you and hurts you with an uppercut the hook the straight left hand the power jab. He's got more to him than a guy like Caleb Plant. And he's got more to him than a lot of fighters in, the divi in this division because of the hand speed and the footwork as well. So it's a great fight. Personally, I don't think they should fight next. I, th I would rather see them fight at 175 because um, I just think, you know what? Like, Morel should get more seasoning. Benavidez, um, you know, should fight, try to fight like the Andrades of the world. Try to, you know, see if he can beat someone like that. And then, you know, I, I, I just find there's better time for that fight to happen. But that's just me, you know. But I ain't, listen, I'm not against it. If it happens next, it happens next. Uh, I'll be very excited about it. If it does, I just feel like, you know, um, there's other options out there for the, both those guys. But uh, let me know what you guys think. You know, Dave Morrell Jr., Senna Agbeko, co-main event of the um, uh, Javante Davis undercard. It, before I end the video, one, one last note. It is worth knowing that Senna Agbeko, coincidentally enough, used to be one of Caleb Plant's sparring partners. And uh, he actually called out Caleb Plant when, after he beat Isaiah Steen because uh, they used to both train with Ch Coach Justin Gamber. And so, um, listen, if, even if he loses this fight, if he gives a good account of himself and does good enough to um, for it to be a, re a, respectable, a, respectable, a respectable performance in defeat, then um, I would I would have ruled out PBC making him an opponent for Caleb Plant in the future. So watch that space but uh, anyway leave your comments down below make sure you guys take the time to subscribe and like i say in every single one of these videos you can love me or you can hate me but i'll just get from daniel so until next time take care guys thank you for watching another video on the untouchable true school sports empire for more great boxing content just like this video click right here and make sure you subscribe much love from sunny south florida